Well, now it's time to start. So welcome everyone to uh, the webinar PB End of Life Management Reduce, Reuse, Recycle by APA Insights. Today we have two expert speakers with us, uh, Bertrand Lemkovics from PB Cycle and Sukwan Raji from First Solar. And they will be uh, uh, letting us uh, know about the latest uh, tendencies in uh, recycling and making the most out of PB um, panels and PV related products when once they reach the end of a useful life. So um, before uh, we start, I'd like to ask uh, our speakers to briefly introduce themselves, just a, a couple of sentences. So uh, Sukhwan, could you uh, um, introduce yourself, please? Very briefly. Sorry, I was trying to unmute. I had to find the unmute button. Uh, yeah, I'm Sukhwant Raju. I'm director of a global recycling program for First Solar. I am based out of uh, United States uh, from Ohio, a city called Perrysburg. And I've been with the company for nine years now. Thank you very much, Sukhwant. Uh, then Bertrand, could you briefly introduce yourself? Yes, hello Carlos and hello everyone. So uh, I'm Bertrand Lemkovic. Uh, I'm based in the PV Cycle office in Brussels uh, and I'm the communication and the marketing manager for, uh, for PV Cycle, ISBL, so the international organization. We have office a bit everywhere in Europe. Thank you very much Bertrand. And now without further ado, I'd like to ask Bertrand to uh, share his screen so, we, uh, uh, so he can start his presentation. And, uh, yes, Carlos, I will start this. Here we go, just a second, the time to... It's okay, first step and second step. Here we are. I'm going to start first with the good news. Uh, the waste is not there yet. Uh, basically, the first prediction of... Uh, PV at the first step, they're still producing after the, the real end of life uh, expectation. Uh, we have some waste today, uh, but basically the waste we have now is mainly broken PV during uh, uh, transportation, uh, logistic, uh, some insurance issue, uh, storm, uh, fire case. Uh, the real, the real uh, end of life return will start only in three to five years. Uh, even if a ma majority of those uh, panel uh, still producing uh, sometimes more than 60 or 70 percent of their uh, initial capacity. Uh, now there is a new generation. The, the first PV uh, was between uh, yeah, uh, 100 and one, uh, 150 watts per panel. Now we can reach between uh, 350 and, uh, and 400 watts per panel. So it's a complete game changer. So it's yeah, people will invest and we cannot blame them to, uh, to renew uh, their plants. So that's the first thing. Then let's switch uh, quickly about some numbers. So, and I remind you, those ones are only broken panel and only in Europe. Uh, as you can see on the first graph, uh, PV cycle, uh, we collected more than 70,000 tons uh, from the first collection in 2010 uh, now. Uh, doesn't look so spectacular uh, when you take into account that the PV panel uh, got an average uh, weight of uh, 16 kilo each. So doesn't look so enormous. The, but uh, the collection is increasing significantly every year. So basically only in France in 2018, uh, we collected uh, 3,500 tons only in one country in one year. Uh, those numbers probably will be doubled every year uh, from now. Uh, and so, the wheel legislation in Europe help us a lot uh, because the wheel legislation turned the waste management uh, into an obligation in Europe. And that's a complete game changer also. So, and to my eyes, the best way to provide 
real green energy. What is the green energy if you don't recycle, if you don't give another chance to, to your product? If it goes directly to landfilling, doesn't mean anything. Uh, on the second graph, you can see uh, the collection by country. So, and as you can see, Germany represents more than almost, sorry, almost 50% of the market in Europe. And that's just following the trends of the, of the market. They are, they are the leader in Europe uh, about PV installation. So it's normal, they are the leader in uh, PV waste also. That's quite normal. Uh, regarding, we have different technology. So uh, PV cycle, we take, we are recycling all technology. It doesn't matter if it's a silicon based, non silicon based, uh, tin film, flexible, uh, CPV, or other technology. We take everything. So, treatment is different for each. The silicon based product, as the market, sorry about that, there's some noise. Uh, the silicon based is, is the main product on the market on, in the PV industry. So, it's normal also we have 84% of silicon based uh, return. Uh, in our collection points. So, and how can we treat all those PV now? So, hopefully, we find so uh, suitable uh, solution for every technology today. So, <clears throat> so doesn't matter the technology. The most important thing is those PV has to come back in their own states. So, what does it mean? So, it can be broken. It can be, you can have a fire issue. At the moment, the, the panel are not melted by the fire. It's not a big deal. If they're completed, so there is some uh, cannibalization of the PV when they're coming back, those ones are way more complicated and it's way more expensive to recycle them. So the most important is to have a fully uh, a completed panel coming back. And we are able to recycle between 90 and 97% of a PV today. So it doesn't matter the technology, uh, then so we are able to, uh, to do a great job on this. And actually is the electronic waste with the better rate, uh, the better recycling rate on the market. So there's no other waste in the, in the WE industry uh, with the 90, 96, 97 percent of recycling rate doesn't exist. So in those recycling rates, uh, we have a maximum five percent goes into energy recovery. That means uh, we produce energy in a, with a smelter. So those parts going maybe uh, until five percent into energy recovery will be some residue of uh, EVA. So that's the back sheet of the panel or uh, some residue of glass, uh, dirt glass. Um, but that's a really maximum of the maximum percentage of the PV is going to, uh, to energy recovery or maximum 5% of land landfilling. And that's the same problem. So some parts are too expensive to recycle uh, properly. So and there's always a loss. So <clears throat> there's, there's no neutral operation in anything. So when you produce a waste, you produce also a pollution. Uh, the better way to do is to produce uh, less pollution as possible. And that's what we try to do. So for landfilling, actually, uh, those residue of glass and EVA are the perfect uh, material for coating of the landfills. So that's not a bad use, uh, people think it's a bad use, it's not really a bad use, it's really useful in those industry. So let's talk about treatment itself. So I'm gonna be focused more on the silicon-based PV as uh, uh, Mr. Raju is there and uh, is way more into the, the non-silicon-based uh, PV recycling. Um, so basically for a silicon module, we, we have an average of between 90 and 96% uh, we can be recycled uh, on a silicone based product. So, and it's a totally mechanical process. So uh, people from Veolia are not there, but they are, uh, they did a really, really nice job in France uh, with a brand new recycling plant uh, in Rousset. Uh, this machine is totally automatic. So basically you put the panel uh, on the machine. There's a, a machine who's gonna remove uh, the frame directly, 
cut the judgment box under the frame. Then there's a uh, like a vacuum robot that's going to take uh, this panel, put on the machine. It's going to be cut in square of 10 by 10 centimeter, shredded multiple times, and then you get a succession of a uh, 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 magnet who's going to take the the condu metal conductor uh, and, and some um, laser detection who's going to detect all the granulometry of the of the panel, or the density, the colorimetry. And they're going to sort all the parts in different uh, bins. So the glass go back directly in the glass industry. Uh, aluminum go back directly in the aluminum industry. The copper from the cable, you can do copper directly uh, after it. Uh, we can also recover the plastic from the junction box and the cable. Uh, silicium, we will talk about uh, secondary recycling. As the, you know, today, uh, one kilo of silicium cost twelve dollar per kilo. Uh, Ten years ago was five hundred uh, dollar per kilo. So the problem with this is not uh, technical; it's economical. So today, the procedure to recycle uh, uh, at, the, at a better point the silicium uh, will be too expensive. It will be around fifty dollar per kilo. So basically, what we're going to do with this? Uh, are we going to use as a substitution material in the concrete industry? Are we going to use it in the silicon industry? Silicium is just a really pure sand. It's uh, and all those uh, the the glass industry, the concrete industry, the silicon industry is all sand based. So that's the perfect uh, substitution material with it, and at a lower cost. So for non-silicon base panel, so I'm. As I tell you, uh, I'm not going too into detail. So, but basically, it's a it's a chemical uh, chemical process to recycle them uh, first, and then you can have like a, a chemical and uh, and mechanical process to refine uh, the uh, both fraction. So, then and about the utilization of the of the fraction after uh, recycling is mostly the same than the silicon silicon based product so we get some advantage with this so basically there's no doubt about uh, co2 emission saving by uh, using pv uh, today so i'm i'm 100 person into uh, i believe 100 person into pv today so it's uh, even if there is a waste <laughs> the 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 waste is totally different, so we can reuse ninety six percent of each material, uh, and actually with recycling your PV, you can save for each ton of PV uh, recycle, you save one point two ton of CO two emission. So, and that's quite good. So when you know that we're gonna have uh, one hundred fifty one thousand ton before two thousand thirty. It's a it's a nonsense to to don't recycle it, definitely. So I just hope that other region of the, of the world today uh, will do like Europe. So turn this into an obligation. So that's uh, the problem with the 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 PV waste today is that take place a lot of place. There's no at least uh, in the in the silicon based product there is no uh, uh, toxic material in it it's just almost everything is sand based glass is sand based and then you gather some uh, uh, metal ferrous metals and non ferrous metals that's it the problem is the the size of the waste you get a lot of land uh, in the Mojave desert with a lot of uh, of pv waiting for recycling there just because that costs too much money if you turn this into an obligation, that will change. Thank you. <laughs> I guess uh, that's uh, all for me now. So I will reply to your question. So, and I leave the uh, Sukwan uh, talking about uh, his specialty. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bertrand. Very interesting presentation. And it's, uh, it's very impressive to see um, how you know, recycling one ton of, um, of PV yields you um, a re an emissions uh, reduction that is even higher. So you 
say you avoid 1.2 tons of CO in CO2 emissions. Um, so um, next we'll have uh, Sukhwant Raju who will uh, be telling, also uh, talking a bit more about this, his perspective from, from the USA. Um, and but before Sukhwant uh, starts, we'll be st uh, still trying to share his uh, presentation. We, uh, um, I'd like to remind you that we will be sending you the slides and recording of this webinar. So uh, never fear, you will get those. I know a few people have asked already. And also, I would like to encourage you to pose your questions on the Q&A box. We will answer as many questions as possible. Uh, either you know, our expert uh, speakers will be um, answering in writing or we'll read them um, out loud at the end and get them, get you a, a live answer. So, um, Sukhwan, have you been able to share your, your screen? Yeah, I'm going to share that now. Okay. Second step. Can you see it now? Yes, I can see perfectly. So over to you. All right. All right. All right. So I will walk uh, the team through, you know, uh, first a background of First Solar, what First Solar is, right? Uh, we have a long history of uh, recycling. So I'll talk uh, quickly, you know, through the slides showing, you know, what First Solar has done. And then I'll actually talk about some of the benefits of the life cycle. Uh, you know, management of uh, PV scrap. So as of now, we have sold over 20 giga gigawatts of uh, solar panels, right? And this has been money-wise, you know, close to 15 billion worth of project financing we have done. Uh, we are considered a partner of choice when it comes on uh, especially freestanding large fields. Uh, the type of panel what we make is a thin film panel, right? And, you know, our, the energies from our panels, you know, obviously they're much more economically competitive than fossil fuels. Uh, we take pride in our company's uh, financial stability and the bankability. A lot of time when you're generating large solar farms, you know, to have a, a partner who has a strong background financially also is very important for the customers. Uh, we've been doing a lot of innovation, you know, uh, in our field, in the thin film. We have record efficiencies of, uh, in our uh, solar panels. Uh, obviously, I'll walk you through some slides that should show you that we have a proven energy advantage and we have a very low environmental impact. It's a global uh, company uh, headquartered in US. Um, our main corporate office is in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, but our technology development office is in Perrysburg, and that's from where I'm speaking. Uh, we have a manufacturing site in, uh, in Perrysburg also. Uh, we are just about to double that capacity uh, this year. Uh, then we have uh, manufacturing in Asia. Uh, primarily in uh, uh, Vietnam and Malaysia. Uh, we started actually, as we started uh, selling our panels, basically it was in Europe because that's where, you know, you know, the customer wanted it. Right now we don't have manufacturing in Europe, but we have a, a pretty good size recycling plant. All of our manufacturing sites have recycling uh, capabilities because as we manufacture solar panels, any of the scrap, you know, we, we believe in not, you know, sending it to, out for disposal. So we have invested into recycling plants. So, so we have been doing this for a long time, have a lot of experience in there. Uh, globally, we have uh, more than 4,000 employees, but when you look into the overall supply chain, you know, we support, you know, close to 27,000 jobs globally. Type of our products is 
it, it you can put in four categories. The first one you can call it uh, what we say is CNI. Basically, it's a corporate uh, a renewable energy supplying. So it could be the panels on large buildings, rooftops, right? It could be a small freestanding solar farm where you know we are generating powers and then we are selling power purchase agreements to large companies like you know big corporations and they can get power from us. Uh, you know, which would be a renewable power versus buying power from other sources. Uh, we have utility scale, large, huge, huge plants basically could be, you know, each plant could be a size of uh, like 500 uh, plus megawatts. Um, and we have a bunch of them in US. Um, we do, um, one of our uh, arm actually does the EPC development. So we actually build solar farms. And then we have an O&M uh, wing also, which actually uh, supports customers in uh, doing the operations and maintenance of the solar farms. It could be our own technology or it could be competitive technology solar farms. So that's the area, you know, the broadly, that's, that's what our market is. So now I'm going to see, you know, right from the beginning, right, you know, when the company started, they wanted to have a very integrated uh, approach to the life cycle uh, management. So the raw materials which we get are kind of byproducts uh, from the material uh, minings, right? So we use, uh, you know, cadmium telluride is the compound what we use. A lot of those are materials are byproducts of the standard mines. Uh, the way a product solar form, a solar panel is designed, there was a lot of thought put into it to make sure that this is uh, recyclable product. Our manufacturing lines are slightly different than the crystal silicon manufacturing lines. Uh, it's a one continuous line versus, you know, a batch process what the crystal silicon uh, modules have. So in few hours, you know, we start with a sh clean sheet of glass and then we generate the product. The product is generated on a single site. Material doesn't have to move from one plant to another. So there is a lot of uh, thought put into it and that helps us to keep our footprint down on you know, how much resources we are consuming. To give you an idea, just within the last couple of years, we changed our solar uh, panel product from what we used to call series four to series six. As we made this change on our product, we cut down the water usage by half, right? So uh, we have a very quick, uh, you know, recoveries on the resources, what we are using, obviously very low on the CO2. Um, our plants are designed to recover more than 90% of the material. Whatever we take as a scrap, more than 90% truly gets uh, recycled. Some of the slides further down would show you that. So we started this back in 2005, right? So company started with the uh, a globally available recycling uh, program where we said, if you buy our panels, you know, we'll take and recycle it, uh, you know, when the panels get to the end of life stage. So just keep in mind, this was in 2005, nobody else was offering that. You know, eventually, you know, the industry caught up, you know, the, a lot of studies started happening in Europe. There was an Okopol study in 2007, PV cycle came into play, which was a basically a voluntary group of uh, you know uh, solar panel manufacturers trying to see if they could voluntarily you know agree to some uh, uh, recycling uh, approaches so that it doesn't become a mandatory requirement from the government. Um, so I you know so it, you know the intent was to avoid the uh, government regulations coming, but it obviously didn't happen. In Europe, uh, 2012, the government regulations came. There was a directive saying that you know the pan how the panels need to be you know handled once they get to end of life stage. Uh, and then 2017, uh, those standards uh, came out, you know, based on those directives. And now you know each country in Europe have to comply with them. And Germany, you know, that's where our plant is, and we comply with the German standards. Uh, which could be stringent, you know, than the overall European uh, standards. So that's uh, just a rough timeline, you know, how things have developed in the recycling world. Um, so why why we should recycle, right? So why why does it matter? 
right? So first of all, you know, it's over 300 gigawatts of PV has been installed worldwide. Um, you know, there, there are some valuable materials resources which have been used to make these panels. Some of them could be, uh, you know, sensitive environmentally, right? Some panels have lead in them. Uh, some panels could have cadmium, indium, selenium, you know. So there, there is a need to uh, basically recycle these, right? So, and, you know, if the businesses do that, you know, for the overall society, there is environmental and socio, you know, economic benefits. Um, it, you know, minimizes the life cycle impact. Uh, it creates, uh, you know, it helps, you know, us to reclaim valuables. Uh, and some of these valuables, uh, you know, if you have to start from scratch and generate those, those can be very energy intensive, right? So if you recycle them, you save on energy. And then obviously just the recycling business on its own could create jobs and economic benefits. Uh, there have been studies saying that by 2050, recoverable values would exceed 15 billion US dollars, so which is large amount. Uh, uh, typical recycling rates, if you were to compare, you know, PV versus, you know, some of the other industries, in automotive industry, you know, probably the recovery is about 75%. In the IT field, right, computers, TVs, that kind of stuff, it's only like 45%. Uh, what we have been doing with our first solar panels, and I'm just talking only, only our, our PV panels, uh, we, we know that we are recovering more than 90%. So what's the value loop? Uh, like I said earlier, the material, the semiconductor material, what we use, uh, it's a byproduct from uh, standard mines, right? Uh, so we take those uh, and then we convert them into, we use them to make uh, thin film panels, which obviously, you know, when it goes into the actual generation of power, it displaces you know, the other power, which could be coming from coal-fired, um, you know, power plants. So, you know, we've displaced some of the emissions, right? Um, and then at the end of life, uh, we have a program to recycle the panels and we get more than 90% recovery. So what do we do, you know, and there's a flow chart later on, with, uh, will give you a better idea of the process, but just at a high level, I'll, Tell you the glass what we recycle, right? It goes into making you know new glass products. Um, the there are some uh, uh, plastic, you know, or uh, uh, elastomers which are being used. You know, we recycle them. It goes to make the rubber products. Um, for um, each kilogram of cadmium telluride semiconductor, we actually recycle, and it could use could be used 40 times. Uh, and it's basically, you know, the calculation showed 1,230 years worth of uh, energy you can get, you know, just by recycling. If you use it only once and just throw it away, then obviously numbers would look totally different. Now I'm going to zoom in a little further into specifically what, you know, on the recycling processing side, what we have it done. Like I said, we started developing this in 2005, 2006, we built first plant. And, you know, at that time, basically there was no real field returns of the material coming. So it was for, uh, you know, just treating the scrap from our manufacturing plant. We spent uh, $5 million worth of uh, investment into each plant and we could recycle 10 tons per day. Uh, we upgraded from that first version of technology to what we call V2, second version of recycling. First version was very mechanical, you know, um, which had high maintenance cost. And basically we would crush the glass and they would go into rotary reactors and then would get chemically treated and then doing the rest of the steps in there. So it was a mechanically very, you know, high intense, uh, you know, um, a uh, lot of maintenance expenses. So we converted that to version two where rather than moving the glass, we said, okay, we'll keep the glass still and move the chemicals around. And that actually helped us to bring our cost down. Although we did the capital investment, but overall the cost was down, uh, operating cost. 
Then back in 2015, we developed a continuous uh, reaction uh, methods. Our capacities went up. We had further reduction on chemicals and you know labor and all that. So why why are we investing into this? We just want to continue to bring our recycling costs down so that by the time our panels get to the end of life stage, which could be you know another 15 years, uh, lab, expected life is at least 25 years. So what we're trying to do is to make sure our recycling costs go down up to a level where when most of these panels are ready to be recycled, it's a no brainer, right? It could be everybody's decision whether the, there's a regulation pushing customers to recycle or not. Just from a money standpoint, it could be the cheapest technology available. So that's that's what we are trying to you know, achieve with our continuous improvement. This sheet actually shows you uh, the basic steps. We start with the solar panel, you know, we do the crushing, milling. And then, you know, we put into this continuous reaction reactors where we do chemical treatment to recover, leach out all of the valuable products. Those valuable products actually then uh, get further refined to make, uh, you know, pure 99.999% pure cadmium telluride uh, material, which goes back into the front line of our manufacturing line to create, you know, new panels. So it's a truly a closed loop system. Uh, the glass which comes out, uh, which is ba basically 90% uh, you know, plus weight of the module, and that glass actually gets uh, you know, chemically treated, obviously you know, rinsed properly to make sure there are no trace metals there. And then we do a separation of the laminate material from the glass. Uh, glass goes into the glass product industry, laminate material goes to make our products. So, you know, it basically gets recycled and put into a beneficial use. Okay, so there was a study done, uh, it's called environmental footprint study. You know, it was done, you know, through European Commission. This particular chart, and I'll have to explain a little bit. Uh, the first bar on this chart, it talks about average PV module. You know, this would include our panels with every other panel, you know, which is being made. And then they looked at it, you know, for each kilowatt hour of power generated, what are the, you know, the weighted environmental impact points, right? On the right side, it's a list of those. So, so I'll just pick a couple of them, right? So the, obviously the top one is the mineral fossil and, uh, you know, that kind of uh, uh, material depletion, right? So what, as we use that, how much of this material is being uh, displaced? Uh, the yellow, if you look at it, you know, what's the impact on the human toxicity? So, so that the first bar is like a weighted average for all of the panels. And then using the same criteria, we developed our own, right? Okay, just for our panels, what the bar would look like. So you can see the difference, you know, uh, Earlier when we were making series three panels, the bar was obviously cut into half the size. Then as through the years, as we modified our product, uh, it kept on coming down. The bar from, second bar from the right, it shows our current product without any recycling. If we were to just generate this material and not have a recycling, uh, what would the impact, environmental impact look like, right? And then if we were to do recycling, you know, if we take credit of recycling, what would the bar look like? So you can see, first of all, right, so that recycling definitely adds value. And then where does our panel sit with the overall environmental impact based on, you know, if you were to compare it with the overall average for the industry. So, so that actually speaks quite a bit. Now the, the next slide, which is the last slide, I'll talk, I'll take a couple of these, uh, four of these points, and actually dig a little bit further into it to, to help, you know, explain. So mineral, fossil, and renewable resource depletion, the first top uh, left. Um, what this, uh, the chart is supposed to show that, okay, what puts the pressure down? You know, obviously, so the problem statement is, uh, you know, with these PV panels, you are depleting resources, right? So what comes in support. So what comes in support is like 
directives and regulations like we, you know, and the national um, NSF standard, which is a sustainability leadership standard for PV, those kind of uh, uh, programs forces people to recycle, right? And so the fine print over there basically says EPL, high value recycling, you know, recovering, use recycling content, uh, for us is cadmium telluride, uh, then you could recover silver and all that. So all of those resources are coming back if you're recycling, right? So that's how you are supposed to read this chart. Same way on the human toxicity, right? So if that's the problem statement, what helps, right? Again, a couple of those regulations are forcing people definitely in Europe and, you know, hopefully, um, you know, it would spread globally then people would, you know, either see on their own a value of recycling or some regulation would force them to do recycling, right? So um, same way on the freshwater toxicity, the problem statement. And this speaks uh, primarily for the, from, you know, the, the elastomers or, you know, the interlayers type of thing, right? Anything plastic, you know, like on the cadmium, uh, in our, in our panels, we have that uh, EVA layer in the middle of the module for the piston silicon. It could be the plastic backing, you know. Um, so if you don't recover that, then basically either when you are recycling this by burning the plastic, not recycling, if you're disposing by burning, or if you are just generating new plastic, there is a water toxicity uh, involved in there. So, so if you were to recycle it properly, that problem kind of can be controlled. Um, same way on the particulate matter, right? So just for the PV, uh, if you are using the PV material and uh, recycling it and uh, create, continue to create the power and you displace the power, which you know otherwise probably would have to be generated through coal-fired uh, power plants, right? So which which would add particulate matter to the environment, right? So that's how you can overall, you know, control the life cycle impact by doing recycling. So I think that's pretty much for me. Uh, on my last slide, I put in uh, two of the contact uh, information. The first one is my colleague, Andres Warde. He's director over our global sustainability and he works in this area on the life cycle impact. He's an expert on that. I, I am subject matter expert of developing recycling technology. So my contact information is in there. So would you know, love to help you know, answer any questions even after this uh, webinar. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sukhman. Very uh, um, enlightening uh, presentation. And uh, as you can see in the Q&A box, we have quite a lot of questions. So um, we will be going through some of them. And um, I'd just like to remind you before we start going through the questions that you will definitely get access to the, uh, um, the, recording, the recording and the, present, the slides as well after the event. So, right, let's go with the first uh, question in the, on the list. So, um, so um, uh, Rami Tarabai has asked uh, the question, what is the embodied carbon of PV panels? Any idea? Is that a question that on which you have uh, data right now that you could answer? Uh, actually, I don't have the, those data right now. So basically, maybe you can find it to the IRENA website. Um, I think it's irena.org. Uh, they have a lot, a lot of information about uh, CO2 emission, recycling rate, and uh, uh, also the put on the market for each country. Uh, and it's a, it's a really huge database with a lot of good information. You know where to go, Rami. Go to uh, irena.org and then you'll find more information about the uh, embodied carbon in uh, PV panels. Um, then uh, let's go to a different question. Um, so um, hey, we have a very uh, demanding um, listener here asking what needs to happen so that 100% of PV is recycled instead of 95%. Um, 5% of uh, 
waste the landfill is a lot when it scales up uh, in five years' time. So um, any thoughts of what needs to happen so you can recycle the entirety of a PV uh, panel? Yeah, um, basically, I think uh, technically it's totally possible. Uh, economically, for the moment, not. Uh, also, because some projects, uh, the value is not enough. Uh, for example, the EVA in the, in the second hat, if you fill up a, a full uh, semi truck <laughs> with EVA uh, of, uh, after recycling, the value of the full truck, if you push it hard, maybe it will be $5. That doesn't make sense to use it in the second industry. So basically the company doesn't want it. Uh, nobody wants this, uh, this part. Uh, also, the, I, I think the question is, uh, is a bit um, turned into the wrong way. Okay, what happened with the five person? Do you have a wash machine? So the recycling rate of a, of a washing machine is maybe 60%. And every, everybody on earth got a wash machine almost. So, and nobody cares, nobody think about it. Thank you very much, Bertrand. Sukhwan, would you like to add to that answer? Yes, same, same answer as Bertrand gave. You know, uh, you have to look into the economies of uh, scale, right? So, and then, you know, somebody is willing to be able to support that financially also. No brainer. Yeah, we can recycle 100%. It would take money and it would take time, but you know, after all, it has to be a business, right? Otherwise, it just becomes a lab exercise. Technically, it's not even a challenge. You know, it can be done, but how how do you support it? Would the customers be willing to pay for that? That's 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 where I think the the bottom line is. And um, I suppose this is not my area of expertise, but right now, the um, part that can't be recycled. I could imagine that if it was toxic or harmful, then there would be legislation in place to prevent it from being to just being dumped in a, in a landfill. Is the, the remaining 5% or so that can't be recycled right now relatively harmless? Uh, no, actually, the, technically, it's totally possible to recycle right now. So there's no uh, hazardous waste uh, in those five person. It's just, uh, yeah, some plastic, uh, mainly some uh, some glass. Glass is just sand. Uh, this is really not a big deal. Okay. Um, right. So um, there is another question that we have seen a few times. The question of uh, how much does it cost? to uh, recycle a PV panel. So Klaus Friedel asks, uh, please communicate at least uh, orientative figures for recycling costs, maybe a possible range between a minimum and a maximum per kilowatt peak. So it's a good question actually. So how do you measure the, the cost of uh, recycling uh, PV panels? Is it by weight? Is it by energy generated? And um, you know, how much would it be? So basically, it's uh, mostly by weight. Uh, the the figure in uh, in Europe is totally different. So giving a strict price uh, per kilowatt or even per kilo is totally different for each country. Uh, so basically, what we do, uh, bas you you get the real legislation. The real legislation is a European legislation adapted differently in each country in Europe. So some country as Belgium or France decided, okay, we will do like a, a eco tax, eco participation at the purchase of each panel. So we collect the money uh, from the from those eco participation. Uh, and then after you don't have to pay anything. I think this is a good way to do the, the, the most perfect way because when you have waste, it's done. You, do, you just have to call PV cycle. We go there with a truck, we pick up the, the waste and that's it for you. You don't have to pay anything. Uh, but everything depends the quantity, the location. Uh, if you have to pick up the waste uh, in Belgium and send it to the south of Germany, will not be the same if you collect the, the, the waste uh, at 200 kilometer in Poland, for example. The, the logistic is a big part of the, of the cost. So everything depends on the location. The, the quantity also, because the quantity, uh, the waste industry, uh, it's like the energy industry. Uh, more you have, 
less you pay. So if we can provide a lot of quantity of waste, the price will be lower. And that's also a good reason uh, for everybody to, to play the game. Because it's, it's, if every country in the world start to recycle, the recycling will be way, way cheaper for everyone. And uh, that ties in into another question that has been asked, which is uh, how could, uh, how could uh, the recycling of PB, collection recycling of PB be organized for countries outside the United States and the European Union, for instance, in Africa? Is, uh, could we imagine an international PB cycle? Uh, actually, we do. We have a global membership. Uh, so we organize uh, collection in Europe since the beginning, uh, even uh, way before the legislation, because PV cycle exists since 2007 uh, in Europe, uh, was built by the PV industry uh, himself. Uh, we start in 2017 to, to provide like a, a global membership to provide the same service outside Europe. But we, we also need to work with the local rules. So that means we cannot organize like a, a, a collection facilities like we have in Europe. Uh, we need to find a, a supplier recycling a facility over there because we will not ship the waste from, uh, uh, from Texas to Belgium to, uh, to recycle it. It's a nonsense uh, in terms of CO2 emission. So we need to find local solution everywhere. So we start to do it. We have a solution in Asia. We have some solution in USA. Uh, Africa is a different deal. Uh, yeah, there is less recycling uh, facilities over there. But uh, yeah, I hope in the future we'll, you, you will have a PV cycle box uh, everywhere in the world. That's the goal. I would like to add a little bit on that. Um, it's not just, uh, you know, how do you start a recycling program? There, even when the parties are interested, the other end of the spectrum is, are the consumers, are the, the people who are in control of these uh, solar panels, are they willing to pay for it? So I'll, I'll explain like a, a real example, like in India, I know there are people, including us, we could have installed the recycling plants there, but when it comes on overall society, are they willing to pay for recycling? Answer is no, culturally, the country is not there yet. Because in India, when you recycle like a newspaper from your house or something like that, what people expect is the guy coming and taking your newspaper actually pays you, right? So unless you come up with a program where you are telling the, 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 the owners of solar panels that will pay you to take your material to recycle, they will be very skeptical of, you know, giving you that. So that's an important factor. And I think it probably would go into all of these countries, you know, outside of the US, you know, in Europe, where you have to see. And once, once a lot of people are willing to give the material to recycle, that would help economies of scale to help you design a plant with a very low operating cost, because the smaller plants would cost, recycling costs would be very high. So until you have a lot of material to recycle, it probably doesn't, you know, make sense financially. That's a, that's a very uh, interesting answer. And I think it ties into um, a, a few of the, the questions we have had. And um, one of them was from Tobias, who was uh, asking you, Sequant, whether um, with the, the, the question says, with the latest version and capacity of up to 100 tons per day, you would only need a handful of central recycling units. Uh, where would you think this will, be, this will be located? Or do you think there will be smaller recycling units in more locations? So if I understood you right, so also what you're saying is that perhaps uh, there is more value have to be had in having scale than having small recycling plants, but over to you. Yeah, so we, we look at it uh, like every year, right? So we know our own, our current you know, what would be coming to us in coming years. So we'll need another plant in the United States, right? We'll be upgrading our plant in uh, Europe, uh, you know, installing a bigger plant basically. And, you know, we already have large scale plants in Asia, right? So, so I think the large plants we are very clear about. Now, if, if it comes to like smaller, uh, you know, you have to look at it, whether you could have a treatment technology um, 
available, which is mobile, right? So let's say for, there's a mobile uh, recycling plant. Could we take that and park it near a site which has, let's say, 100 megawatts of solar panels, right? And economically, if that can be done, that would be a cheaper, cheaper way of doing that. Otherwise, all those 100 megawatts would have to come to one of our existing fixed recycling plant, right? So it's the numbers game. You have to look at it, you know, which, which side is better. But in our uh, roadmap of our future development or recycling, developing a mobile recycling unit is one of our projects, which is already, uh, you know, we are working on in the next five to 10 years. I think there would be a need for that to be actually make operational. Thank you very much. Um, so we have time for one more answer, I think. And I'm going to pick this uh, question because I think it goes uh, straight into the heart of the matter. And I think you have already given the answer, but I think I would like to hear you elaborate on this. So Ahmed asks, um, do you think the residual value of the recycling could compensate for dismantling costs, transport, etc.? If not, how much is the gap? So actually, uh, not for the moment. Uh, with the, 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 you know, this is 10% of aluminum on a panel. That's a part you can recover. 80% uh, 80, 80 of glass approximately. So that's the biggest part. Okay, we can recycle uh, really correctly the glass, but the price of the glass is not so, so important. The silicium doesn't cost nothing. EVA doesn't cost nothing. We still have some, uh, uh, um, a little bit of uh, copper uh, in the in the cable and so on, and that will not cover for the recycling. So that's also why we need to, I'm sorry to say this, but to force people uh, to to pay for the recycling uh, a little bit. Uh, and it's not a it's not a big cost. Now you know uh, in France it's something like 50 cents for each panel. For residential use, is uh, with a 20 panel, it's going to be uh, yeah some uh, some euro uh, not a big deal but if it's the same in each country that will not maybe will cost some sense for for each panel to to cover the the, the transport logistic uh, and the recycling process so uh, at the moment who uh, bears the cost of recycling is it uh, the manufacturer or is it the uh, owner the final the end user of the panel Everything depends where. Uh, in in yeah, uh, basically in Belgium, uh, in Europe, normally you get a, a producer responsibility. Uh, so they have to take back uh, the system. But in some country, uh, the legislation is adapted differently. So uh, in some country is the owner of the waste. In other country is the producer. Uh, so uh, let's say in, in, for example, in France, Belgium, Spain, then the, the manufacturer needs to pay back the pan. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's an uh, obligation, yeah. I can imagine that those costs, which you know, seem extremely reasonable. If you're talking about a, a few cents or a euro, a euro per panel, um, are probably borne at the end by the, the, the person that buys the panels. But it seems like a, a reasonable, in my opinion, anyway, a reasonable price to pay to have. Um, to recover the, uh, these, all of these materials. So, uh, very interesting. I think, you know, most of the questions that we have revolve around these, uh, these issues. So, we still have 16 questions there, which are a lot. And uh, I'm go I don't know if you, Bertrand and Sukhwan, are going to like this, but I'm going to encourage our um, uh, viewers to contact you so <laughs> to uh, get the, these questions answered. Um, but um, he, yeah, so contact uh, Sukhond and Bertrand to have your, your questions answered if you, uh, um, if you have you know, a burning question that you haven't uh, seen the answer to in this webinar. But um, like all good things, I'm afraid that this webinar is coming to an end. Um, so uh, um, I'd like to thank all of you, all of our viewers who've uh, supported us and who have been with us in this uh, webinar. Uh, the, you will get an email with the recording and the presentations um, from the, the latest uh, early next week. Um, so um, 
thank you very much for joining us and I encourage you to go to apainsights.com and sign up to other webinars that might be of your interest. We do a lot of webinars related to renewable energy and PV, um, PV in, in general. So, uh, um, uh, Sukorn, would you like to say a few parting words to our audience? Yeah, this this was a good good experience. I really enjoyed it. This is actually my first time I've been doing webinar, uh, so I, I enjoyed it. Uh, looks like the questions were excellent, and I enjoyed uh, sitting through Bertrand's uh, presentation also. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sukhan. Hopefully, the first time of many. <laughs> yeah. Bertrand, would you like to say a few words before you go? Uh, yes, Carlos. First, I would like to thank you to invite me uh, to this uh, panel list. Uh, basically, now I think it's a good way to answer to the, the, the main question, can we recycle PV? And the answer is yes, don't believe the legion. So I can hear a lot of uh, not stupid questions because there is no stupid question, but uh, a lot of uh, people who just don't know because there is some uh, fake uh, information going around so uh, a good opportunity to answer to those questions and uh, yeah thank you for for this thank you very much uh, Bertrand and once again thank you very much to um, our audience and um, you get the presentations don't uh, don't worry about that and the recording as well in an email soon and uh, well have a, a good day and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening or morning depending on where you are take care bye